Hi there, and welcome to this new series, End-to-End -end Internet of Things. Now, as this series is pretty long, it will be divided into sections, the first of which is Concept and Technology Implementation Demos. And the first session is this one, which is an introduction to IoT, Concept and Cloud Architecture. So, why IoT? Why did I choose to speak about IoT? Well, because IoT brings together most of the latest technologies and converged, these technologies will have a major impact. Now, the series is focused on giving uh, practical examples with implementations, but this first session is one of very few that does not feature a demo. But we will be having example implementations in the next session that will build up to bring together an end-to-end -end IoT scenario or scenarios that leverage these technologies, such as deep learning, big data, containers, microservices, and other technologies. So what is the Internet of Things? One definition is that the Internet of Things is basically about making things smart or digital and things here are inanimate objects. And this enables a new level of services and capabilities, and it's achieved by a combination of the following. Adding sensors, adding connectivity to the cloud, adding actuators, and implementing the thing where its properties and or its capabilities can be programmatically manipulated. So one example is this car. It's a mechanical and electrical system. However, these cars are smart cars. They can be autonomous, and that's because they are connected basically to the cloud. And they have many sensors, have computers on board, and their capabilities, such as speed and direction, can be programmatically controlled. And in fact, their capabilities can be updated over the air, as similar to what happened with the Tesla models that received software and firmware updates over the air, which added capabilities for autonomous driving on highways and self-parking. Our IoT is already, you know, and we see it everywhere or in many facets of life, you know, such as you are familiar with the Amazon Echo, which has, you know, far field uh, voice technology, Nest temperature sensor that's connected and the Apple wearable, Apple watch, and there are connected sensors and even airplane engines have many sensors that take readings and this data is aggregated which enables crews, maintenance crews to perform maintenance and even to perform preemptive maintenance. And with all that data, it enables also for better design and implementations of these systems. Even in retail scenarios, there are iBeacons, iBeacon technology that enables indoor navigation, localization, and coupled with other data about the consumer, they also enable additional services that retailers can offer. Now, there are many segments for IoT, such as uh, smart cities, manufacturing, construction, mining. In fact, there is a whole area called the Industrial Internet of Things. There is even also agriculture and farming, energy, healthcare, transportation, logistics, consumer IoT, such as in smart devices and wearables. Now, with all of these sensors, basically we get a lot of data. And when we, you know, we've been talking about big data for the last few years, but with IoT, big data now goes into a completely much bigger scale. And the fact that we have all that data at the same time that we have a lot more computing power has enabled us to leverage and take advantage of deep learning. And we are starting to see benefits from that already. What you see here is an IoT reference model. And if you look at it from the bottom, you know, you have the physical devices and controllers. You know, that's what's called the things in IoT. And then there's a connectivity layer, which includes communication and processing units, then edge computing. Now, edge computing is actually important because it allows us to address different scenarios, such as, you know, sometimes connectivity can be disrupted. So we need to be able to still manage and other situations when it wouldn't make sense to send all the data to the cloud. Uh, so some processing, local processing can happen and only important data can be sent to the cloud. Or sometimes there are situations where there is a need for a faster response, you know, basically to deal with latency. So these are some examples that edge computing can help us with. Then there is a data accumulation, data abstraction, applications, you know, basically what people interact with, you know, with applications. And that enables, you know, collaboration and processes. 
So what you see here at the bottom are, on the bottom left, are the things. And they are connected to the next layer through the edge, either through edge components or directly. They are connected to the device and connectivity and device management layer, which is connected to the big data infrastructure. And here, many of these components we are familiar with, uh, such as publish, subscribe, messaging, data storage, whether they are NoSQL, such as HBase or HDFS or the new Kudu. And then the layer of unified data service services that are part of the Hadoop ecosystem, such as security management and resource management. Then the layer of, on top of that, of the familiar applications on top of that, which such as databases, such as HBase or Spark, Spark Streaming, Hive and Pig, and in the case of Cloudera, Impala. Now, this big data infrastructure is basically an infrastructure that we would be able then to run on top of that, we would be able to run machine learning and deep learning libraries that enable us to get insights such as TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn and of course you know R and Python and there is even a higher level abstraction libraries such as Keras which makes it even easier to implement and all of that is consumed by applications IoT applications many of which would be implemented as part of a cloud infrastructure and implementation which the lower level of that would be uh, based on microservices and containers such as dockers or then you have management for containers using Kubernetes and then you have the IoT applications on top of that now what you see here, this whole thing, is basically an example of an IoT cloud platform, which is the upper level of the IoT architecture. And I say the upper level because at the lower level, at the devices level, there is even more detail. It's at the device level or the local area level. And, you know, the examples of that we had mentioned, actuator. And these things we'll be talking about in more detail next sessions. So what's next? We'll be going through some fundamental technologies, such as microservices, containers, the cloud, sensors and embedded systems, IoT protocols, localization, big data, especially using Spark, and machine learning using TensorFlow and some aspects of deep neural networks. Then we'll be implementing some end-to-end -end example implementations. One of them would be computer vision and autonomous driving, and we'll use a Raspberry Pi and a small remote control car for that. Another one would be home automation. Then some consumer analytics and relation to localization. Voice first technology implementations. And some analytics based on the data that we get. Then there would be other implementations relating to drones, chatbots, and others as they come up. Thank you.